establishment is that it does allow for certain tax credits to uh, come forward to assist in the project, and that's, uh, uh, that was one of the uh, uh, very large uh, undertakings that we have uh, done to, to date. Additionally, we have uh, done the uh, interior cleanup and testing of the uh, project. Uh, we have expended well in excess of $2 million of uh, private capital at this point uh, for the project. With regard to the uh, timing of it, we have a uh, spring of 2013 set for a demolition and a certain environmental remediation uh, projects that have to go forward on this particular building. The, uh, as, as Council is aware, there is also the, uh, uh, for the uh, additional grant that you were kind enough to uh, help with this. And, uh, part of the match, and I know that you're always wondering where the matches are coming from, involves the uh, private infusion of the same principles that are involved in this project and have been involved, and they have staked millions of dollars of their own money uh, to go forward with it. The first phase of it, uh, which will be the demolition and the remediation, is also the subject of the uh, sing single application for assistance Why we're here this evening. That's approximately $550,000. I have copies of the application uh, if, if council would need uh, additional paperwork on it and uh, appreciate uh, Linda's help in uh, actually putting it together. Uh, we supply the information, but we understand that the city has uh, uh, been uh, very uh, uh, progressive in getting this type of money. This money comes from the uh, Mount Airy a casino, the uh, communities that are adjacent to that, which include Lackawanna County, uh, provide a vehicle where uh, the funds can come into, and they have been infused into Lackawanna County. I've been involved in some of the other projects throughout the county. This, pr this will allow Scranton to participate in that so that we can get the uh, building up uh, to obviously uh, where we all want to see it restored to. Uh, and in doing so, that will add to the tax base. Presently, we have paid all our taxes, and I know that uh, that's always something when uh, applicants come before the city, but uh, uh, we are a uh, large taxpayer and uh, happy to do so. Uh, the next item deals with jobs. As part of this application, and there is a breakdown of it, we're going to be creating, when it's uh, fully phased out, remember we have the art uh, residency and, and different office space that in retail that will ultimately encompass the entire project. Uh, when it's all built out, we'll have uh, 469 jobs, uh, which uh, is a, a significant uh, uh, one base for the city. Uh, quite a few of the persons will be uh, residents, or we would assume that, and they uh, will both uh, work here and pay the appropriate taxes that are due on it. So it, it's really adding a, a very vibrant part to that particular community, especially the residential aspects of it, as Council is aware and has been very supportive and has undertaken that full revitalization of that area. You have the uh, trail that is coming through there and uh, that will be used by the art space uh, residential side of the particular project. So uh, that's where we're at with regard to the the budgeting as well as the uh, timing of the, the project of it and uh, we all look forward to one the jobs in the short term not included in the uh, 400 plus jobs are all the construction jobs that will immediately uh, be uh, going forward with inside the uh, building uh, obviously with the monies involved the uh, prevailing wages will uh, uh, be paid on this particular project and uh, and I think that, uh, one, it, it restores a part of the community that uh, is deserving of that and has been recognized on the national registry for that. And if we have any uh, additional questions, uh, I can address the parts of the application if that would be appropriate or whatever else council would like to hear about this evening. Uh, just to summarize, I think I hear you saying then, uh, since last we all met, with regard to this project. A few things have been accomplished, uh, specifically placement of the building on the National Registry of Historic Places, uh, interior cleanup, and testing. Is that correct? Yes. 
is there anything additional that uh, we might have missed? Uh, I, our soft costs with regard to our studies that we have made, uh, with regard to the uh, Delta Group, which has been uh, putting together the various estimates for each one of the components. When you look at an application and, and you have ably put it together, uh, they, we have also absorbed those particular costs. That would be part of the uh, $2 million that we have infused mm -hmm. to date into the project. So there's significant, uh, I, I'm referring to them as soft costs, but they would be, you know, for the professional fees and, and items to, one, get to the position where we're at to actually make the application now for demolition to get workers in there, more boots on the ground, and more and people to phase work. one begins, I believe you said, in the spring of 2013. What would be its ending date, approximately? Oh, uh, one, the entire project will obviously take several years to go forward with. The, uh, once we go through with the demolition and we will hit the uh, remediation, environmental remediation, uh, we hope to get the art space you know, as uh, uh, for one of our first uh, items in there and, and get the uh, people up so we get that residential component to uh, kick in. That takes, you know, time obviously as they move forward with the renovation. So I would imagine this project will take, uh, uh, I, I don't want to lock uh, Jody in over a, a time period, but I would say it, it will take time if it's spread over several years to, to get that up. You know, that's, this is 600,000 square feet, so, mm -hmm. uh, and it's $50 million when it's all built out. That's why, yeah. Uh, uh, um, please identify the partners that comprise Lace Building Affiliates LP. And are they the same individuals who requested and received the RACP grant previously? Uh, yes, they are the, uh, the uh, same individuals. Uh, uh, Mr. Cadaro is obviously one of the uh, uh, principals and uh, uh, I forget the other. Claude Limoges. Claude Limoges. Claude Limoges. Limoges is the uh, other principal that uh, uh, is involved in the the project. They're, they're the two major principals and there hasn't been any change with regard to that. And um, did you secure then the matching funds required by the previous grant? Uh, what we have is part of the two million, the two million dollars that I had referred to, which yes. will be, and it's outlined in the application that we have, will be used as part of the matching grant. We're aware of it that this is reviewed by all the funding agencies, and that, uh, with regard to our private funding, that unless we have all the dollars, and not only the dollars that are in there, but approved dollars, that the monies will not be released to Scranton Lace Associates. So we have. Uh, we have two million dollars in actual capital put into it as well there's, there's millions of dollars in other equity contributions that they give you credit for so we will uh, meet or exceed what they're looking for. And if you don't meet or exceed it, you don't get the money. So uh, obviously we would have tied up so far two million dollars of our own. So have you purpose. received that entire grant at this time? Have we received it? The entire RACP grant? No, no, we work. haven't started the draw process on that yet. Okay. We have not. And just one more question. Uh, we note the um, hopeful presence of art space uh, as probably one of the, the first components to be accomplished of this project. Um, I believe they may be a nonprofit. Will that affect the taxation of the property? I don't do the work for art space, so I, I don't want to speak to that particular issue, but I, I believe that uh, there will be a, a residential component, so I don't know how that would mm -hmm. play into it or not play into it. I, I don't imagine that in and of itself has significance, but there, you know, there could be other funding sources or something that they have or that comes out of the project in the future, so uh, I, 
they they haven't approached us with regard to that yet so I, I just don't know the answer to that but I don't know how you know somebody buying an apartment there mm -hmm. uh, would be unaffected by that and of course the the project itself though is going to encompass much more than that mm -hmm. and the remainder of the project should be taxable is that correct it will be I didn't hear what you said Matt. the remainder of the project then beyond um, the limitations the possible limitations of art space would be taxable is that correct the uh, different projects there there are tax credits now with the uh, registry national registry so we'd have to we, we are looking for those if there were other public sources or other ways of getting up to 50 million dollars to get that one that's a significant amount of money obviously that we'd be at about five million dollars and on our matches we'd have five million in for the first ten uh, there may or may not be we, we would have to come back here you know to look for any other uh, additional tax credits or any I'm not working on any but uh, that I don't want to preclude that if that means you know getting future development or future jobs or whatever this council thinks is appropriate for that type of development so uh, have I seen that on large projects the answer is yes uh, do I know of any now uh, no but that doesn't mean we wouldn't be pursuing that if that if they were available mm -hmm. you know and obviously the spin-off of it for the city is you create direct jobs if you're creating 469 direct jobs I would imagine the spin-off of it is probably going to be something similar at least 300 indirect jobs is what the most national studies have for a project this size and which would have these types of components so all of that would be uh, presumably uh, taxable and that's adding to your base if we hit those numbers and they're you know obviously aggressive numbers uh, that's a phenomenal project I, don't, I, mm -hmm. I know you work on very progressive projects and, and to be applauded for that but this would be one of the largest that you have so there's always public and private investment of some sort thank you and councilman Rogan do you have any comments or questions yes um, very briefly <clears throat> just like to thank everyone for coming in again um, if anyone that watches these meetings knows I have a reputation I guess for voting no quite a bit but this is one project that I could firmly say I fully support, um, not only for the neighborhood in, in Lower Green Ridge that, you know, there's a beautiful empty building sitting right in the middle of it that we would love to see up with, you know, people living there and, you know, commerce and people paying taxes to the city and, you know, the hustle and bustle of a, you know, like the, the success the Connell building had. Um, we would love to see that in a neighborhood in Scranton. Um, Currently, we've seen a lot of development in the downtown. This takes place in a neighborhood. I like that, and I think a lot of other people in the in the city also like it. Um, also, the mention of 469 jobs long term um, is something we, we desperately need right now. Cause, as everyone knows, and plus the construction jobs, we all know we see in the paper the unemployment rate in this region around 10 percent. The true unemployment rate is probably 15. Same thing in the country, and the, the middle class has been crippled. So getting people back working again is, is definitely an added bonus to restoring the building in the city, which is, again, something I fully support. I, I don't have many questions. We, we went through this before and answered everything I had. So um, I, I'm more than happy to support this project, and hopefully we'll see this one come full circle and be completed and also right up the road with um, the former high school or junior high school project. So we'll see housing in that neighborhood again, which, which will be great. Um, just one question for Ms. Abley, separate from um, this project. Um, would you be able to provide us with um, the loan portfolios and where all the loans stand? Yes, this week, um, Attorney Mulligan and I met with um, our Director of Finance and Compliance Officer. So we've been working on it. Do you want to add? Thank you, Mrs. Abley. Um, myself and Mrs. Abley, as well as the accounting department, have been looking at uh, various strategies in order to look at some of the loans that are either performing well, underperforming, not performing at all. And we're actually, we're going to meet tomorrow morning again. So we should have some sort of update for you real shortly, I would think, within a week. Great. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, we've seen, like you said, some that were very successful, others that you know, unfortunately, have not been partly because of the economy and other outside forces. But 
And um, for, I just want to mention again, this, this project that hopefully we'll be voting on next week, this isn't taxpayer money. This is money from the gaming um, with the casino revenues. So I, I just want to make that distinction as well for, for this vote for, um, for the viewers. And that's all I have. Thank you. Um, actually, I, I just wanted to um, correct one thing. I believe the legislation is a resolution, and therefore it is in seventh order tonight. Oh, I apologize. I thought we tabled it. Okay. I don't believe so. In that case, I will be voting yes tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, please. Or um, questions. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, placement on the National Registry um, places limitations on what can be demolished. Am I correct? Yes, it, does that does the placement on the National Registry change anything from the original presentation that you made? No, sir. We took that into consideration. Thank you. Um, approximately, like what percent of the, I'll say, building, you know, the buildings that are there will be retained? There is 600,000 square feet currently and approximately 94,000 square feet come down just to make, uh, make way for, uh, for uh, walkways and entrances and, and, and parking areas and some other areas. So, and, and, and about 40,000 square feet of that are structurally not safe currently. So it uh, kind of helps us out. Thank you. Um, Second, on the, on the timeline, I know that the, the project schedule in here uh, is for phase one, I yes. believe, and it says uh, beginning in March 2013, completed in six months. Is there... It, uh, that's okay. That, that's specifically for the, the components related to this application, the remediation and the demolition. Portion. Okay. Uh, I, I guess my question was, was going to be, is there, at this at current time, is it the plan to complete phase one and then continue to work, or is it complete phase one and wait for additional funding or, you know, whatever? Um, I, I, I guess the fear is that in some projects we've seen that that are done in phases, that a, a phase gets completed and then kind of comes to a standstill. And, and I don't think any of us, uh, I, I guess we're all looking to, for you to say that, no, this will be a, a project that will continue um, to be completed. We, we ultimately had to pick somewhat of an arbitrary uh, line in the sand to pick phase one versus phase two of where we start and where we finish, but it is our hopes. Uh, that phase one just continues and, and we continue as we continue to market the property uh, from a leasing and from a rental standpoint that the phase one line continues across the building and we've got you know 500,000 square feet once the buildings are demolished to uh, rehabilitate and to lease and to rent so it is our hope that there is no lull in the action that phase one just continues throughout the project and, and th that is our hope. And, and there is sufficient funding to, to do that, to go beyond phase one and into the subsequent phases? Well, we've currently, we're currently stacking our funding for phase one, which is, which is a $24 million project, uh, plus or minus. And um, ultimately, as new projects come on, whether we're doing, going to do residential or commercial, depending on the need at that spe uh, specific time, uh, we'll continue to stack our funding as we go. So. Is it all in place? No, it is not. Um, phase one funding is what we're working on currently right now. Um, but as I said, I, I, I do think it is just going to be a continual uh, development project as we move across the site. And the the grant that you will apply that you're applying for uh, extremely competitive I'm told. That is our understanding. Yes, sir. That there's no guarantee that it will be received. That is correct, and, and one item of note for, for uh, council is the total project is about a million seven, relevant uh, relevant to what we're doing at this phase. We're asking for five hundred and fifty-five thousand, but 
the project remediation and demolition phase that we're talking about is a million seven, um, but but the the ask specifically is for five hundred and fifty five. Thank you, and and the last thing, um, I'm going to sound like a Reagan Republican here. Um, <laughs> it, it hurts, believe me. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I think that is good about this project, and uh, Mr. Rogan said that the, the, the trickle-down idea that the money that will be spent on the project will not only benefit the project, but hopefully benefit the community in, in local workers. Um, and at, I believe you said it would be at prevailing wage. Did you in your presentation? There are prevailing wage uh, requirements uh, specific to some of our funding sources. So yes, sir. And, and there's an intent that it would be with local firms? That is certainly our intent. It, it, if possible. That is certainly our intent. And, and I think that's a, an important part of the, the project that, um, that in that way it can act as not only a stimulus to the community or the neighborhood in which the lace works is, you know, stands, but also to the, the greater Scranton community. And, um, and I think that that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and thank you. And again, I, you know, very favorable um, towards this project and uh, I hope to see it, uh, you know, complete it uh, as soon as possible. We do also. <laughs> and Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or questions? Yes, just briefly. Uh, first, I would like to apologize for arriving a little bit late. I hope I didn't miss too much. Uh, but uh, again, like my colleagues, I'd like to thank you for coming here and explaining the program. Uh, what the intent was and uh, I only have 17 questions so no. <laughs> that's what happens when you get down low on the line the questions are already asked so uh, you're spared from them but I do echo my colleagues and I'm looking forward to this project and uh, just keep us up to date thank you and Councilman Joyce do you have any questions or comments Yes, I would just like to echo the comments of some of my colleagues. I thank you for coming in and explaining a little bit about the project. And I appreciate that this is a $50 million investment in a local neighborhood that is in some need of serious repair. And one question I did have, out of the 469 jobs, do you have a breakdown of what types of jobs they will be? Uh, Yes, we'll have approximately with the uh, wellness component 160, education 103, food services 48, the uh, potential for the uh, museum component 17, office 70, retail 71. Okay. Thank you very much. That was really the uh, only remaining question that I didn't hear, so I was just curious as to what types of jobs would be created, and that's all. Thank you. Could you repeat once again the information that you just provided con uh, concerning the specifics of the types of jobs created? Hey, what I can do is I actually had it uh, typed out so I can leave it right for council, but uh, I'll go back through it for the wellness component. Uh, that would be 160 jobs at an average uh, wage of $33,060. There's the educational component. That's 103 jobs at an average rate of $36,412. We have the uh, food services, 48 uh, jobs. Uh, that has an approximate value of $14,086. There's the Education and Museum uh, with the potential of 17 jobs for $25,456. We have the 70 jobs for the office component and they would be paying on average $43,531. And we have a retail component that would be 71 jobs of approximately $20,613. Thank you very much. And City Council thanks all of you for your participation this evening. The project is certainly ambitious and worthy. 
And I believe it will significantly benefit not only Lower Green Ridge, but also the city of Scranton as a whole. We wish you great success. And if there are no further comments, this public caucus is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Evelyn Margaret Barrett loving mother of my friends Barbara, Betsy, James, and John, grandmother of my former student Peter, great-grandmother and aunt, young Matthew Waldron Stahl, beloved son, brother, grandson, and great-grandson, all those who perished as a result of this week's devastating hurricane, and their dear families and friends who suffer their loss. Also, Please keep the countless Americans who are suffering in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy in your prayers. Call, please. Here. 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 Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, tax assessors reports hearing dates held on October 3rd and 18th of 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Evaluation received October 15, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, minutes of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority's regular meeting held September 20, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 
3D audit status from Robert Rossi and Company received October 26, 2012. Are there any comments? Yes, um, this is something that I will address during motions. Thank you. Anyone else? Received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes this evening, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I have one. <clears throat> there will be an apple pie sale at the Elm Park United Methodist Church, which is located at the corner of Linden Street and Jefferson Avenue on November 17th. Nine-inch homemade pies will be sold. Orders are required in advance. Regular unbaked pies will be sold for $10 each. Unbaked pies with no sugar added, which will be made with Splenda, will be sold for $11 each. Regular baked pies will be $11 each, and baked pies with no sugar added, which will also be made with Splenda, will be sold for $12 each. To place an order for the pies, please call 342 8263 and the last day for orders will be November 13th and that's all thank you the 2012 election is fast approaching as you go to the polls this Tuesday November 6th remember that you do not need a photo ID to vote in this election please be sure to vote the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network will hold its Cheers to Hope fundraiser this Sunday, November 4th, from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Radisson Lackawanna Station Hotel in Scranton. A suggested donation is $35. Live entertainment includes the Fab Three, the East Coast Trio, Asia Lena, and the Cue Balls. 2012 honorees are Bill Shaykoski, Tammy Saunders, and former Mayor James Connors. Please support this worthy cause. The Fraternal Order of Eagles in Scranton will conduct its annual craft fair on Saturday, November 10th, beginning at 10 a.m. Various crafts and holiday items will be available for purchase. All proceeds will fund a Christmas party for foster children in our community. For more information, please call the club at 961-5495. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ozzie Quinn. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ozzie Quinn, Scranton Taxpayers. I got a call last week from a woman from South Abington who was formerly from South Scranton who was uh, really upset about the state of the city in regards to the, uh, the debt and the way that the neighborhoods are being uh, torn apart. And uh, she asked me to refer back to uh, uh, a story that was written by Robert Swift. He's with the Harrisburg Bureau Chief for the Scranton Times on August 7, 2012. And uh, Mr. Swift, I did email him this day, he emailed me back, and I, and I uh, basically what the story is about is the fact is that uh, Robert Freeman, he's a Democratic uh, representative from Easton, and uh, he was former chairman of the local uh, government committee and is a high-ranking Democrat. And uh, he was trying to address the nonprofits in the state of uh, Pennsylvania in regards to them uh, from being, uh, not all of them being tax exempt, only a certain percentage of it. Now, uh, he, uh, what's on, he, he had one with the committee, it was, it was spoke about in the fall, and uh, after the election, he's up for re-election. If he's elected, I spoke to him to, today in his office, that he will reintroduce it. And basically, he says that he's convinced it would be a way of saving our municipality slipping into Act 47 status, or currently in Act 47. We all know about community taxes and bond issues and raising taxes and whatnot is not going to able to erase this this this, this debt it's it, it, 
it's it's like a, it's a knee jerk every time we have to pay something, and uh, it's a tough thing to do. And uh, I know that we're coming on board. Will be some new state legislators, and uh, I think uh, Mrs. Evans. I think you already know, met Mr. Blake or Senator Blake. I think. Uh, Mr. Freeman is very much very interested in the fact that he said he, he wanted to uh, distribute the wine and liquor sales to the cities who are distressed, okay, uh, the taxes. Uh, uh, however, DCED felt it would be better if uh, they looked at a payroll tax or a tax on public utilities in place of local property laws. But anyway, what, what, what I'm here for is the fact that there is a lot of interest going on across the state. As we all know, there's so many cities that are under, in distress. And uh, I, I'm hoping that uh, you will stay on top of this after the first of the year. And uh, so, because there's, this, this money has to be paid back by the state. That, the, the, the award by the uh, to the uh, firefighters union, rightfully so, is one of the problems was caused by Pell, because they said the arbitrate, arb not, not arbitrate, okay? So, and uh, I can't see any other way of getting out of this here mess, the financial mess, if, if it was just a million or two, but we're really, really in debt, and our population and, and our, uh, unemployment or whatnot, it's, it's going to be tough. So I think we uh, appreciate it and anything the Taxpayers Association can do to meet with uh, you and the group of representatives, we'd be glad to do that to see if we can't move along something to move Act 47 along so there won't be just talk. We will be here again next year talking and we won't be going anywhere, but we can really move it along next year. Hopefully, uh, also, next year will be the last year of uh, Mayor Doherty's term, and uh, I'm sure that he will be putting together, a, a, again, Mr. Rogan, an OECD plan. And uh, I, I think that actually, since he is a lame duck, I think the fact is that maybe you should look at this very carefully and sit down with HUD and then talk about that housing rehabilitation I was talking about. If you can try to arrange a meeting with, uh, with HUD, and uh, you'll see it's not Ozzy Quinn that's saying this to you. Uh, Huddle, Huddle will probably repeat the same thing. But they will tell you that it's up to the mayor and uh, who of the city who, who is in charge of the uh, CDBG program. So I ask you to stay on top of those two issues. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. And I just, just um, I remember last week you mentioned about um, having the mayor and Linda come in. Those letters were sent out last week. The request. Doug Miller. Good evening, uh, Council Doug Miller Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Just like to uh, begin uh, once again. Uh, the last few weeks, I've been uh, discussing Engine Seven, and I stated that each week I was going to continue to inform the public on what's going on. Yet again, Engine Seven still closed. Uh, as we continue to jeopardize the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of West Side, and uh, no action's been taken by uh, our illustrious uh, fire chief Tom Davis. Uh, moving on uh, to a few other issues tonight, uh, we were made aware today that we were given approval for additional uh, unfunded debt borrowing uh, in the amount of 9.75 million, which will be paid back over 10 years through a tax increase. Uh, certainly, funding that's necessary to get us through the remaining part of uh, this year and uh, moving forward. Uh, secondly, we were also made aware that a hearing date has finally been set in regards to the commuter tax, and that is December 10th. Uh, it's a 1% commuter tax that's been proposed, and obviously it's an integral part of the uh, revised recovery plan, as we are relying on that much needed revenue, uh, 2.5 million next year, and I believe 4 million uh, in 2014 and 2015. Uh, certainly, it's necessary moving forward um, without it, you're looking at uh, substantial tax increases in amounts that the taxpayers of this city simply can't take on right now. And as I've stated week after week, those city residents who do oppose the commuter tax, in other words, are asking for an additional tax increase. And I certainly don't think that's something we want. We're asking for everyone to pay their fair share. 
and that's what this is all about and nothing more and I don't think it should be made a political issue of those outside of the city um, who certainly through uh, letters to the editor and other outlets have made uh, a big issue out of it and uh, I certainly find it, this to be uh, an issue that shouldn't be political uh, we're simply asking for the fair share we've been talking about that uh, we discussed that tonight with the Scranton Lace project obviously there's questions on a uh, an alleged uh, art studio I believe and uh, there's questions as to whether or not that will be a nonprofit and if they will be exempt uh, I think that's something we need to look at because if that is the case I certainly am opposed to that uh, when we're talking about paying our fair share I don't think we should allow uh, that take that to take place certainly an investment that's being made in a neighborhood I support but at the same time I don't feel we should be giving a free ride to a select few uh, what's good for one is good for all uh, you know if we're going to build a bright future as I've said we need to be innovative and we need to come up with the unique solutions to move us forward they're not easy decisions we need the revenue generators and simply making editorials in the paper and the Scranton Times drawing their political cartoons and mocking the city government uh, isn't going to move us forward uh, they had many things to say recently uh, with the recovery plan and the commuter tax and opposition and I just feel that rather than being in opposition and making comments in the paper through their cartoons instead of spending the last 10 years covering up the fiscal mismanagement of this administration maybe they should have exposed it and came up with some ideas and solutions to help lead the city government forward but they took the approach to cover it up to protect the administration and mislead the public on what's really going on in the city uh, on the agenda tonight uh, 7a dealing with the uh, legislation on the uh, liquor license for the uh, big house tobacco outlet located at 200 Greenwood Street uh, it would be approving the uh, transfer of a restaurant liquor license currently owned by little Nikki's pasta house on Fallbrook Street in Carbondale obviously there were some concerns about this uh, I'm have, have myself having uh, some of those concerns as to why the tobacco tobacco outlet uh, would be requesting a restaurant liquor license and I know we tabled this a uh, few weeks to try to get a, res a response to that and I don't know at this point in time if we do I see it's in seventh order if we're aware as to why they'd be requesting a, a restaurant I'm, license I'm going to address that under motions mr. Miller okay thank you um, I certainly like I said a little concerned by that and certainly uh, look forward to hearing your response later on uh, finally tonight um, I was made aware of a rumor that was that's been floating around town uh, in regards to garbage collection in the city uh, and maybe somebody here tonight can maybe set the record straight make it clear and let us know if maybe it's just simply others misleading the public on what's going on but I was told that uh, the DPW will be no longer collecting uh, garbage for uh, nonprofits KOZs in particular churches throughout the city and I just wanted to know if there's any uh, truth to that rumor and maybe we can send a letter to DPW and try to get a response to that um, I was made aware of that today um, I've not heard anything yeah. I said it like was that. it was news to me I thought I'd bring it up tonight um, certainly it was a little surprised I never heard of anything like that before but maybe we can address that with uh, mr. Dewar and get a response and uh, with that said uh, with the election on Tuesday I would just encourage everyone to exercise the right to vote and that's all tonight thank you thank, thank you. you thank you that concludes our sign-in sheet for the evening but I'm sure there are those in the audience who would like to address council Scranton Phillips Grantonians. Good evening. Since I have been up to Mount Airy and lost my share of money, I'm very particular on this thing. I assume you all went down there and examined the project before you vote on it. You're not going to vote on something you didn't actually go down and see. I hope not anyway. I hope you have more common sense than that. Just look at what happened up there the 33 million we poured into that half a block of Lackawanna Avenue when are you gonna wake up go down if it's a viable project and it looks like a good project examine it if somebody tells me I spent two million dollars on that project I want to see where that two million dollars went into that project we know they're gonna tear some of it down we know that the question is 
have they at least done something that exempt $2 million to be spent? I don't take any words on anybody. That's the first thing you should learn. Somebody comes up to you, you want to see the books. If it looks good on paper and you examine the project, then go haw hog on it. But for words, forget it. My mother once told me something. How do you tell a politician is lying? He opens his mouth. When somebody comes before you for a half a million dollars, what do you think they're going to tell you? This is a bad project? This is this? This is that? No. They're going to put, they're going to butter everything up. It's a shame. But where, where we are in Scranton, because people listen to words and not look at facts. And the facts are prudent. I like to see that project done. I worked in that lace mill. I worked on the elevators there. It's a nice building. I believe it was a building. <laughs> and for Tira. I never forgave them for tearing down the Holiday Inn annex that turned into the nursing home. That was a well-constructed building. And we paid for it. We paid for the demolition of that building. I don't know if you ever got it back from the bank or not. But this is the things that go on in Scranton. We're great out there with our hearts, except for the poor peons that are suffering. People who can't pay their rent. People who can't pay their eating bills. For every dollar that's spent, no matter where it comes from, you've got to make sure it's spent 100% in the best way possible. To sit there for rhetoric, forget it. I've been along a long time. Rhetoric don't mean nothing. Anybody can use the words to say something. You gotta use your head. When you go out and pull that lever like you all said to vote, you gotta vote with your head, not with your name or party. Unless you do that, we're gonna sink into an abyss deeper than the one we're in. Now, I've been around here a long time. Like I said before, Scranton was a beautiful place. Your grandmother could live and be safe. Your mother could be safe. It's no longer that. And who do we have to blame? Our elected officials. And who do you have to blame that put them elected officials in there? The voters. The voters in Scranton have not used their head for a long, long time. I don't know why. It's there in front of you. Even when you hit them with them high taxes, that's going to come. I don't know if they'll use your head there. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry that people don't spend more time finding out what's happening. I told you once before, I was always more afraid of Washington than I am of Moscow. Because they could, Washington can do more damage than you than anywhere else. They can look what they did to the garment industry. That was Washington who damaged us. When you go to the polls, you look and say, who voted for that free trade agreement? Who put all these women out of work? No. They got short memories. That's what's wrong, actually, with the city. We got too short of a memory. I wish we wake up one of these days and see the light. Probably not in my lifetime, but I hope in somebody's. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Dave Good Dobson. Evening. Good evening. President of Scren. Uh, okay, I'd like to compliment Council on uh, their uh, revisions on that capital improvement list last week. I was glad to see that we weren't going to tear down a million dollars worth of facilities to spend all the more. And uh, I was curious uh, many months ago, the, a few months ago, we had a man in here uh, preaching bankruptcy and his name was Mr. Lewis. And I was wondering if anybody knew whether he was actually connected with the university somehow. Just for personal information. Uh, maybe I, somebody could uh, just close a website to me sometime. Uh, now, on this nonprofit business, uh, once again, I'd like to say how much township uh, tax exemption 
is uh, too much. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, followed the paper. Now we have a uh, uh, Geisinger moving into our uh, Mount Pleasant Industrial Park there, and they're not going to pay any taxes either. Uh, so it's nothing you can do about it right now. But I really feel that once again we need to start zoning institutional areas and say that is it. And if somebody wants to come in from the state and compensate us for it, that's just great. But it can't go on the way it is or we're going to wake up someday and find 45 or 50 percent tax exempt for the good of the whole region. And all we're going to get is funny uh, caricatures in the newspaper and, you know, they might seem funny to some people, but if I was uh, the subject of someone, I'd be a little insulted. <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, um, and also, it's been pushed in the newspaper about uh, many of our ho homes are $500 or less for city support tax. Well, I don't want my home compared to Clark Summit, and I don't want my home compared to a cul-de-sac in Moscow. I want my home compared to Oliphant, Dixon City, Carbondale, Old Forge, Music. Taylor has a uh, uh, landfill there, and they negotiate, so we can't hold that. Uh, we can't cite that as an example, but that's the bottom line is how many tax exempts are too much what percentage of tax exemptions are too much and as far as tax increases uh, and many times and I don't mean to insult anybody that relies on Social Security or whatever but uh, two-thirds this is a, a fact I learned in the last week two-thirds of the people that lost their employment since 2008 have started back for 30 percent less. So just imagine taking that kind of shot. Maybe you have a car loan, your boss walks out and tells you it's your last day. I worked in a plant like that. They walked out at two o'clock in the afternoon. They said, that's it. Go. So we went to the bar and drank our sorrows away. but. It wasn't fun for quite a few years after that, even though it was a crummy job to begin with. <laughs> uh, and uh, on these fees, uh, I also sat down there and got a brainstorm about uh, nonprofits. Now, if our tax collections are, are uh, supporting trash removal, then why is it that a nonprofit pays the same as everybody else that might be paying a considerable uh, property tax? And, uh, some people do pay high taxes. I, I really wouldn't want the tax bill from uh, Ronwood. That might exceed my mortgage and my taxes put together, really, if it's uh, close to $5,000, $6,000 a year tax for a more fashionable section of Scranton. And I have a nice neighborhood. I, I don't get hit uh, have any problems with any of my neighbors they you know if they don't like each other they just leave each other alone and if, if they're sociable they're sociable that's great and uh, golden parrot update I'm gonna make this fast I might not be able to stay the whole night I'm involved with uh, elections and working with elections but uh, 4,500 percent profit in outsourcing Delphi formerly AC Delco division if, uh, if they uh, hadn't received the bailout money and stuck the, uh, stuck the government with uh, the pension benefits, uh, they, uh, uh, they actually turned a 4,500% profit and they held the government uh, they held the government hostage. So, you know what always seems to amaze me is how for years we fought communism and these so-called capitalist job creators just 
get along with communists just grand in red China. Bok, 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 have a good night. They got a super bok, bok. Take care. Good evening, Council. Maurice Schumacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, back to back to my follow-ups. Mr. McGough, do you have the answers to my two questions on the rental registration? I made the request. I'm waiting for a response. Okay. Uh, I guess next then would be Mr. Rogan. Um, do you know what is going to be in, uh, what kind of data is going to be specified in this loan report? I asked for a summary um, of the loans. So, you know, through the conversations I've had by summary, I'm, what I mean and I think what council means, we all want to see it, is the status, are they up to date? Um, are they in default? If they are, by how much, for how long? Things of that nature. Well, um, I, you know, I think there should be more. It was back in now, and we've been waiting for this data. I think I brought up the 408 Cedar Avenue on the 16th of August, and here we are on the 1st of November, uh, and we still don't have the information on that. And then I now did send you some. Uh, did you receive my email today? Yeah, I did send thank a little you. bit of information on that. Yeah, but it's. Oh, I know there, there's much more. Yes, yeah. it's. It's deficient, and I think maybe you guys should get your head together before and make sure that the information that you'd like to see is actually included in the report you get next week, or hopefully get next week. Um, I, I, back in um, late, late June of 06, uh, the Paisano Partnership, uh, the, I assume they're brothers, Edmund and, and Chris, uh, received a $250,000 zero interest 30 year commercial industrial loan. And uh, driving by there, I noticed that um, most of the properties are for sale. And so I'm wondering, since they are only six years into a 30 year loan, if those properties were collateral for the repayment of the loan. Now, I did notice that there they purchased another lot in addition to the ones that are for sale for $365,000 and the uh, the price they're asking now is a million forty-five. so whether or not they're going to pay off that loan when they get the when they sell the property I I would certainly like to know more about that one um, and I think I may come back because I may have another one for you. Um, and skip to Mr. Joyce, did you, uh, were you able to ascertain why the controller's report had, uh, had a, a $1.9 million more at the, end, uh, at the end of August than you said was collected through mid-September? Uh, on the I haven't, and I, I also um, put in a request uh, to some of the other questions that you had regarding uh, the parking tax receipts and, and the audit. And I, I will be speaking to Mr. McGowan tomorrow personally. Okay. So I'm going to um, ask him personally for the answers to those questions. So hopefully I'll, I'll have answers by next week. And if I get them uh, tomorrow, I, I will send you an email with the answers to your okay. questions. Oh, thank you. And did do you know whether or not um, the provider of the the loan for the unfunded debt or amalgamated requested um, and or received access to the to to the 2011 audit before they uh, proceeded to make loans to us or agree to make loans? Well, um, there is no audit yet for 2011, so obviously there's no way that they could have access to it. Well, there, there is, I mean, there, I'm certain that it should be mostly completed. And are you going to read to us from uh, 3D tonight and tell us what is still outstanding and when those are expected in? Yes. Good. Um, Ms. Schumacher? Uh-huh. 
Although the audit has not been completed, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Amalgamated and Janie Montgomery Scott would have required um, financial statements of the city. And I believe that uh, Rossi and Sons provided that to each <coughs> before the uh, agreements were made to enter into financial transactions with the city. Okay, thank you. And uh, maybe I would appreciate also maybe if uh, Mrs. Evans, you could ask tonight for one of the, the staff members. I don't know if whether you're aware, but the phone system in this building uh, has been not functioning very well for three to four weeks. And I keep checking with IT and and they don't have an ECD for when the the project will be completed. Uh, when you call the fourth floor, you don't get answers. Um, and if you leave, if you get a, a, would you like to leave a message? I don't think they're getting the messages either that it's really messed up up there. Because I've been trying to uh, find out, uh, for instance, I do have tomorrow off and I would like to have come in to review that university plan that, um, a solicitor you talked about, but I can't get in touch with Don King because he works on the fourth floor. And I've also been trying to contact him uh, on whether or not there is a, an institutional zone been established for the community medical college, or the Commonwealth Medical College. And as I say, it's just not possible to get through. And initially, when the, the phone system started acting up, it, they said they thought, you know, something was on order and it would be a lot faster. But with no, <coughs> no estimate, um, I, I would like, it maybe if somebody who's actually in the building could get the answers to those two questions. And the rest, once again, I will save until next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Mrs. Evans, but those people are under the direction of the mayor and whenever was anyone was calling our office, uh, we were directing people to the mayor, and I do know that their office is taking messages what they do with them. I don't know, but I... The mayor's just, office is taking the message. Yes. Okay, well, I did try calling the mayor's office today, too, and didn't get an answer. So, I mean, that was... I was going to try that and something else, but okay, I'll do it. Thank you. That is an issue I was going to bring up, too, uh, tonight, because... Uh, you know, I'd, I'd spoken to a, a few of the inspectors who aren't receiving their messages. Uh, people are trying to call in, and it's the same problem. So we're going to have to get this issue uh, checked out somehow. Is there anyone else? Hi, Chris. Hey, Chrissy. Chrissy. Hey, Jack. What happened What's to Stephen down there? The duck is gone down there. What happened to it, I wonder? I thought I went to the lake. They're, wait, they're waiting for you and you didn't show up. You slept in too late. Well, <laughs> 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 tonight, the mother asked me if you need to see tomorrow. So I went, I went, I went to Good luck tomorrow? No, Saturday. The plan said at 2 o'clock, it happens. So I went, West, good luck? And that was a good luck, Saturday. Well, good luck with the hot dog. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Chris. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I think um, the mayor's office is directing calls back up because they have a problem with their server on their telephone. Um, th the first thing I want to say is, you know, I'm, I'm really disappointed that Council is all on board for this project. Um, I agree with a lot of what Andy said tonight, but you know, the greatest thing that I think this council could do is go take a walk around North Scranton Junior High School and really take a look at the other three sides of that building. And all the money that's been dumped in there waiting for one phase to go after another. You know, I went to, I went to school there as a child and I, I think the greatest benefit we could give the city at this time with that building is probably to tear it down. Because it's been so neglected over so many years and so many millions of dollars have been pumped into it and everybody's waiting for one more dollar from the government in one form or another. Um, you know, 
a, a council member said that they were glad that something good was going to happen for the neighborhood there. That development is going to be a neighborhood all on its own self. We don't even know, uh, I mean, from what I listen to them say, uh, I don't know, are there taxes abated for a certain period of time in that project? No. Okay, because when you asked that gentleman about taxes, he really didn't give a very good direct answer. He started talking about all the money they were going to spend. Um, At this time, there is no abatement for them. Their taxes are paid up to date. Uh, I think they were saying that the situation involving art space, for example, that has to be uh, looked into. But again, you know, if they're, if, uh, they're living in apartments within that, you know, development, I, I can't see why they would be exempt as a nonprofit. They're individuals I, living there. All, what I've read in the newspaper, it says that certain aspects of that project are being, going to be, uh, I guess, tax exempt. And um, I have a real problem with that. The other thing I have a problem with is uh, when the gentleman spoke, he talked about f phases. And we have phases going on at North Scranton. I mean, they're not even telling us if they're prepared to move on to phase two. I mean, he spoke a lot, but he didn't say much. And you know the troubling thing is that everybody seems to come to Scranton with their hand out. And when, when you look at the state of the city, really, we've pumped money into downtown for too many decades, and we haven't pumped any money into the neighborhoods. And this is just another, in my opinion, another one of these projects. Somebody came forward, saw a chance to make big, big money, have other people give the money for free, invest a little bit of their own. It's a win-win. I mean, why don't we go to every house that's condemned in the city of Scranton, find out who the owner is, let them put up 10,000, let the city put up 60 or 100, and let's redo every condemned home in the city and bring them all up to code. Because all we're really doing in this city is we're allowing people to move into industrial, or commercial property as apartments. But what we're really doing is we're taking any demand for apartments out of the neighborhoods. I think that this, I think the council needs to go out in the neighborhoods and see how many apartments that we have actually that are vacant. And then try to ask yourself one question. Why are we taking the heart of a downtown? Because that's the lifeblood of a city is to do business. And when you don't do business in your downtown, I don't know what you're doing. When you turn your downtown into, into rental units, that's not a business center. That's a residential center. And when, if you go and you rezone the city from light industrial or whatever it is to residential uh, dwellings, where are, we gonna, where are we gonna ever create employment centers in the city? And are we gonna shift all the zoning laws to, so that we can help every developer who comes here with his hand out? And then what do we tell all the residents in this city? That I think some people here spoke about them being very, very, uh, I don't know, they're just, they, they have no jobs, no money, they're overtaxed. You know, the people in the Abingtons are meeting today to, to try to fight the commuter tax. I find that to be a wonderful thing. I think the one question we need to ask is why for 30 years there were no investigations into what was happening with the city's finances since the 1970s, if in fact we were troubled all the way back then. And then we get people to come here and we're just going to hand them money and everybody on council's off for the project. But you know what I'd say? Go take a walk around North Scranton Junior High School. Because you know when that came through, everybody talked about how great it was going to be. It's not done yet. There's a couple of new windows in the front of the building, but there's not any on any other side of the building. The inside, people broke in and stole all kinds of stained glass out of there. The building's been looted. And when you talk about the former Casey Hotel, my understanding, the reason they never redevelopment, never redeveloped it wasn't because it was vacant for so long. It was because it was stripped. I mean, we've got to do things that are going to actually help the neighborhoods. And, and handing money away in this project, I think, is ludicrous. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who cares to address council? Five A motions. Well, I just wanted, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make one clarification regarding um, Mr. Morgan's comments. The city is not providing grant money 
to uh, Scranton Lace Affiliates or to uh, the former North Scranton Junior High School or to any of the uh, rental projects in the downtown like the Connell Building and the Chamber of Commerce. These are all Pennsylvania State grants, I believe through the Department of Community and Economic Development. So the city itself, in terms of the city's tax dollars, they are not being expended toward any of these projects, nor have they been. Uh, Mrs. Craig? 5A motion. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Uh, no, actually, I'll wait until the comment on the legislation. Thank you. Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. A few items. Um, the first one is I'm very disappointed about a letter that we received from the county commissioners um, addressed to Tax Collector Courtright. As Mrs. Evans mentioned, I believe it was a few months ago, the city and Tax Collector Courtright asked the county to agree with extending the discount period to pay real estate taxes by one month from February 28th to March 28th. It is my understanding that when the county commissioners walloped the taxpayers of Lackawanna County with, I believe it was a near 30% tax increase, 38% 38. 38 tax increase, the city and the school district, everyone went along with extending the discount period to try to take some of the burden off of the taxpayers. As most of you know, I opposed most of the tax increases, but I, I do agree that extending the discount period was a way to at least soften the blow a little bit. And the letter, and I'll read it out, it says, Dear Bill, the county understands and appreciates that a real estate tax increase can be a potential hardship for taxpayers. That being said, we do not feel that extending the first discount period from March to March 28th, 2013 is affordable for the county at this time. While the county annually seeks a tax revenue anticipation note to provide funding until we begin receiving real estate tax receipts, extending the first discount period has the potential to create a problem with our cash flow. It is our hope that taxpayers are able to take advantage of the first discount period by its scheduled end date, February 28, 2013. Not only do I disagree with the county commissioners, and it wasn't just for the record, it wasn't signed by the county commissioners. It was signed by um, the Director of Administrative Services, Chief Financial Officer for the county. But I would assume ultimately the decision would be made by um, our elected officials, not by somebody under them. When, again, as I said, when the, when the county was walloping everyone with a tax increase, the city helped out. And did it cost the city money? Yes, it did. But was it the right thing to do? Yes, it was. It was the right thing to do for the taxpayers. Now when the shoe's on the other foot, and it's not even completely on the other foot because the county's continuing to raise the taxes again, they're not willing to help out the taxpayers in Scranton. I'm very frustrated. wasn't happy when I, was, when I read this letter. I was hoping they would have extended the courtesy to the city that the city extended to them. Um, it's not the right thing to do. I hope that they will reconsider the decision and I would urge the residents of Scranton to contact the county commissioners and ask them to reconsider extending the discount period. That would give taxpayers another month to get together the funds to pay these taxes. Now for working people who have a mortgage many times, it's, included with your, it's usually included with your mortgage, so you're sending the same amount every month. That may go up a little bit. But this is mainly for senior citizens and those who were lucky enough to pay off their mortgage before becoming a senior citizen, which are very few these days, who have their home paid off. So they don't have a mortgage payment every month where their taxes are. So these residents that this would help are the people that have their home paid off. And at the beginning of the year, they have to scrape together that money to pay their real estate taxes. And it's very difficult to do, especially with the price of home heating oil, the price of gasoline, the price of food, everything has gone up. The economy is terrible. And giving a, a month more time would have helped a lot of people. I hope, the, as I said, I hope the county commissioners reconsider and uh, I would urge everyone to, to contact them. 
Um, Mr. Rogan, if I might, I'm going to be contacting um, Mr. Courtright tomorrow about this issue. Uh, I'd like to know what his decision is on it and uh, if indeed it's essential to have the agreement of the county commissioners. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Mr. Courtright is going to be able to assist the city and uh, provide that extension that council asked for. And, and that's great. And, you know, judging by, I didn't see the first letter that went out, but judging by this one, it seems it was Mr. Corey that sent the request in on council's behalf and on, on, from his office asking for the discount. Um, like I said, I, I hope there's something that could be done, but it's, it's very disappointing that the, the county commissioners won't go along. So oh, I agree. Hopefully, I agree. hopefully the public will ratchet up the pressure on the commissioners and uh, and help them out because Scranton is by far the biggest municipality within Lackawanna County. Um, next, moving on, as we I, I spoke about a little bit last week, um, when council approved the the CDBG funding for the next year, um, we increased road paving in low to moderate income areas by over 100 percent. And I had a few people that contacted me, on you know just in passing when we run into people and through emails and said, oh. There's a lot of roads being paved in, in the community this year as well. And they said, oh, well, the mayor's, they said, the mayor must be paving them because next year's an election year. And a few, it was two or three people that mentioned this to me, and I said, I told all of them the same thing, and just so the public knows, this funding for the, the paving was not from the mayor, it was not from the city. It was the money that this council, five people on this council, pushed for and reallocated for paving in low to moderate income areas. And it's frustrating, especially with, you know, in the media, a lot of times when things are going bad in the city, council gets all the blame. But the things that are going well, the mayor gets all the credit. So when it comes to the, the allocations for the paving in the low to moderate income areas, the mayor had absolutely nothing to do with increasing those allocations. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think he may have even vetoed two years ago our changes, which included increased funding for paving. And it was council that asked the director of DPW to increase what they applied for. Because if you only apply for 300000 we can only give you 300000 Now that they upped the application amount, we're able to give more. And I know all of us that, you know, every person that put suggestions in, it was everyone's priority was to pave roads. Mm -hmm. The roads in this city are atrocious. And we're, we're making progress slowly but surely on it. And uh, there's much more work to be done. And, and I know as, as long as I have a say in things, I'm going to keep fighting for that money to be used the right way instead of uh, squandered on projects that we don't really need. Um, next, I, I do have a question about items 5B, C, D, E, and F. And I guess I'll just bring this up now. Um, it was my understanding in the past that these items were always passed after the budget. Is there a reason why this is being changed? Yeah, and, and actually I'll elaborate more during motions, but, um, and, and I believe Mr. McGough brought this up a few weeks ago, that we want to have certain taxes on the agenda before the court date for the commuter tax so we could show to the court and demonstrate to them that we are in fact increasing other taxes which is part of the justification for the commuter tax in itself. Now, will these items be tabled before a vote on the, on the budget? Or will these be passed before the budget? I believe these would be passed um, before the budget. Uh, they are all contained in the revised recovery plan. So they were set back in August and what we're doing is precisely what Councilman Joyce said. We're passing them early in order to facilitate um, the city's position in court uh, regarding the commuter tax, but in addition, we need everything in place so that at the beginning of 2013, the city is up and ready to go and return to financial sound footing. Okay, and, and that's why I always thought that these were always 
file council number one, 2000. Right. In the, whatever that, that's, in the past, yeah, that's, that's how it has been okay. conducted. And my only concern is that once these are passed, that part of the budget is set in stone. There's nothing that could be amended or changed in that part of the budget. Well, there are still um, taxes, though, that are not Yeah, included. I see the property tax, which mm -hmm. is obviously one of the biggest generators of revenue to the city isn't included. But there wouldn't, so, but these ones, once they're passed, they will be set in stone and placed into the budget. Yes. Okay. And the final two items, um, and I know Mrs. Evans, you said you were going to address this, but um, the big house tobacco issue, did any, did anyone from them agree to come in front of council? Yes. Um, actually, Mrs. Crake uh, was in touch with the owner of the establishment unfortunately he has been out of out of the country but he is very anxious to attend a public caucus and he has agreed to do so next thursday november 8th at six o'clock with his attorney okay and they are they would be very pleased to respond to any of our questions thank you and finally, I, I just want to respond that I know Mrs. Evans mentioned this as well regarding um, some of the things Mr. Morgan said. You know, I think we would love to be able to use gaming money to rehab homes mm -hmm. in the city. I don't think there's any person up here that would vote against that, to be able to give matching grants to homeowners to rehab their homes. But that's not how the program is set up. These gaming funds are as Mr. McGough said in, in Attorney Jones, they're highly competitive and they're used for large projects that create a good amount of jobs for the community. Um, you know, it's half a million dollars is certainly a large sum of money, but of that money, none of it is taxpayer money. Unless, of course, like Mr. Spragley, you went to the casino and you did lose. But it, it, it's, and I don't want to say it's, it's an optional tax. You don't have to go to a casino. So it doesn't, not everybody's being forced to pay. It's, um, you know, I think they used to call them sin taxes, tax on cigarettes, alcohol, and tobacco. So I do think it is a good project. Um, I haven't been in the, in the building physically, but I did do a tour around the building. And I do think that it, if fully implemented, it will be a very nice project. And it's going to take time. As was mentioned, this, this building is huge. Just taking the time to walk around it, it's, it's a city block. You know, it's not like rehabbing, you know, a home. It's, it's a multi-year project, and Mr. Morgan also didn't seem happy about, you know, the phases, but that's how these big projects are done. You can't just take a city block and say, well, we're just going to build a building and, and let people move in. There, there has to be a process, and I know Many people may be frustrated with how slowly it goes, but especially when you're dealing with a building that I would say is probably 100 years old, there are a lot of elements that need to be removed from that building. Lead paint, possibly asbestos, things of that nature that have to be removed to meet current safety standards. I'm sure that that takes up a lot of time and a lot of money. And I, I don't see, I understand some have criticized that, well, you know, what if the project doesn't come to fruition it's in our best interest and more importantly in the developers best interest that it does it's his money on the line it's it's not it's not our money you know he wants to see it and, and all the partners they want to see it completed and and council does as well for the the fact that it'll, it'll help revitalize a neighborhood it'll create jobs it'll restore a beautiful building in the city and it'll get the city moving in the right direction so hopefully everything will um, we'll go smoothly with this project and hopefully in a few years some of us will be going down there and taking a tour of a newly renovated building and um, as mentioned before next Tuesday is election day I hope everybody goes out and votes um, as Mrs. Evans mentioned um, you're not required to show your ID this November but you will be asked to show your ID at the voting poll um, next May for the municipal election the voter ID law will become law and at that point, everyone will be required to show a photo ID at the polls. So I hope to see everyone out on election day. And um, that is all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have comments or motions? Yes, just a couple of things uh, quickly. 
Um, in regards to the phone system, I don't know if we completed it, but uh, I'd like to make a request that we uh, send a letter to the proper authority to get this system corrected, because I did have a few questions today myself. Um, just to touch on the, on the lace works and um, and the goodwill building, uh, not to belabor the point, but uh, like Mr. Rogan said, and I believe all of us here, it's in everybody's best interest for these projects and for the neighborhoods. Um, the money is not coming from the city itself, but uh, we have to stay on top of them to make sure these projects come to fruition and are complete. I know that the uh, Goodwill project has languished for a long time, but I've seen a lot of activity recently, and I think the final piece of the puzzle, if it was in our mail last week, was something from the Planning Commission had to be approved uh, before they could go ahead with it. So I think we'll see some action on that very shortly. And as far as look, looking at the development, looking at the plans, um, last time they were here, they gave us a significant amount of information. They provided us with the layouts of what they plan on doing with the building at that time, what they, you know, the whole scheme of things and how the phases were going. This is just another piece of the puzzle tonight. But we're all, and I know I've gone, gone by there, I think Mr. Rogan has, uh, we're all going to do our due diligence and, and keep up with these projects to see them going because, you know, things like this in the neighborhoods, I believe, are, are, are great. And they, uh, you know, they're an offshoot to, to further development in those areas. And it's something we need, especially during these economic times. And I think, it, if my memory serves me correct, I thought Mr. Morgan said that was in favor of that project last time, and he said it was it would provide an economic engine for that area. I I, I thought that was his opinion previously on the Lace Works project, but I may be mistaken. Um, and lastly, I just want to say uh, we're very fortunate this area dodged a bullet with Hurricane Sandy. I know. I mean, I'm not saying we we're free of any problems or, or damage, but it was far less severe than was anticipated. And uh, let's pray to God for all those areas around us that were, were devastated and for the fatalities. But I do want to commend all our city services uh, for being prepared and, and going that extra step to do what they could do. From our clerical workers in City Hall who fielded many phone calls and, and uh, answered a lot of questions. Uh, to our public works employees who had to deal with uh, downed trees and, and, and leaves blocking sewers and stuff like that. To our police and firefighters who were handling the same situations. The police officers, numerous, numerous burglar alarms, tree down calls, uh, barricades, uh, firefighters with, with power lines down, uh, tree fires, trees down. Fortunately, there wasn't uh, a lot of flooding, but I do believe that, uh, that the, the departments were prepared. I had a long conversation with uh, Fire Chief Davis on Monday to inquire to make sure that, that the fire department was prepared in the event of uh, the impending problems they were anticipating with the, with the hurricane. And uh, during our discussions, we, we discussed the manning and, and opening stations and, and stuff like that. And my good friend Chrissy here mentioned Engine 7 and Engine 9 being closed yet. And that was one of my questions. Um, after I had brought out the problems two weeks ago and Channel 28 uh, went and, and, and did an actual uh, videotaping of Engine 7 and Engine 9, the city has, uh, has done some repairs to the buildings at this point and they've also had professional cleaners go into engine seven and engine nine. Now I haven't seen the final result at this point, but I was assured by the chief that that was done. However, they're awaiting, the reason they didn't open the stations at this point is they're waiting for an air quality test for both buildings. So I'm not sure what the holdup is on that. I hope that wasn't a reason why we couldn't open the stations for the hurricane. Uh, you know, I mean, 
if, if, if there was if we had the report and they're sitting on it I, I'm gonna be checking tomorrow to just see what the status on those buildings are but uh, I know that uh, when I spoke to the chief he was waiting for the air quality reports before he let anybody go back in and uh, and on top of all the, the, this stuff here, I would like to commend our police department too for that, uh, for the arrest they made in that uh, the break in where they took advantage of the hurricane up at Staples and Best Buy, I believe it is. But uh, just want to thank all our city employees for doing a good job in our time of need. And uh, fortunately, we dodged a bullet. And I think that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Joyce? Yes. <clears throat> Before I begin speaking about agenda items tonight, I would just like to send a special thank you to all of the city workers for their efforts during Hurricane or Superstorm Sandy, call it what you will. I believe that a special thanks is warranted for the city DPW workers who continued to collect refuse during such a furious storm and executed their other daily duties throughout the city with trees being down. Special thanks is also warranted to the city fire and police departments for protecting our city and keeping our city safe throughout the storm. Also a special thank you is warranted to all management and clerical employees who conduct, who continue to work through, through the storm and perform their daily duties to serve the residents of Scranton. For this I would just like to say thank you. Secondly tonight, on tonight's agenda, there are a number of taxes and fees. The legislation for these taxes and fees, which was sent down by the administration, represent agenda items 5B through 5F. The legislation for the taxes and fees that was sent down by the administration was sent down earlier than in previous years. Generally, legislation for all taxes and fees are sent down by the administration in January of the of the year for which they are being levied however this year they are being sent down by the administration early so the city could prove to the courts that the city is in fact raising other taxes with the hope of obtaining a commuter tax to provide a brief explanation in order to obtain a commuter tax one of the requirements under the Serafini bill is that the city must demonstrate that it is raising other taxes before a commuter tax can be granted by the courts. To remind, the commuter tax is projected by the Pennsylvania Economy League, Pell, to generate $2.5 million in revenue for Scranton in 2013. The first piece of legislation sent down by the administration is for the real estate transfer tax, which is item 5B. In this piece of legislation, it is the intent for the city to raise the real estate transfer tax from 2.8 to 2.9 percent for the calendar year of 2013. The increase in the real estate transfer tax is a part of the revised recovery plan that was drafted by the administration and city council. The increase of this tax is projected to generate an additional $185,000 in revenue for the city on an annual basis starting in 2013 if passed and $555,000 in revenue for the city over the course of the three-year recovery plan. The second piece of legislation legislation sent down by the administration is for the mercantile tax which is item 5c the intent of this legislation is to raise the mercantile tax to one mil for calendar year 2013 from its previous rate of 0.875 mills in 2012 this is the same rate that the mercantile tax was in 2010 the combination of the increase in the business privilege and mercantile taxes is projected to generate $500,000 in additional revenue for the city in 2013 and a total of $1.5 million over the course of the three-year recovery plan. The third piece of legislation sent down by the administration is for the business privilege tax, which is item 5D. 
In this piece of legislation, the intent is for the city to raise the business privilege tax to one mil for the calendar year of 2013 from its previous rate of 0.875 mils in 2012. This is the same rate that the business privilege tax was in 2010. And as I just stated, the combination of the increase in the BP tax and the mercantile tax is projected to generate 500,000 in additional revenue for the city in 2013 and a grand total of $1.5 million over the course of the three-year recovery plan. The fourth piece of legislation sent down by the administration was for the waste disposal fee, commonly referred to as the garbage fee. The garbage fee in the legislation that was sent down by the administration was set at $178 for the calendar year of 2013. Originally in the recovery plan that was sent down by the administration back in May, the administration had intended to raise the garbage fee to $189 in 2013 and $200 in 2014. This would have constituted increases of 6.2 and 5.8 percent, which compounded would have led to an overall garbage fee increase of 12.4 percent. In the drafting of the joint recovery plan, Councilwoman Evans and I fought, fought hardly against this increase, and the end result in the joint recovery plan was that it was decided not to raise the garbage fee on city residents. The fifth piece of legislation sent down by the administration was for the local services tax, common re commonly <laughs> referred to as the LST. This tax was formerly named the Emergency and Municipal Services Tax. To inform, this is the $52 per year tax that is deducted from one's paycheck, usually in $2 per week increments. There will be no increases in the LST as they are prohibited by law. And lastly tonight, as one may or may not know, the city of Scranton does not have a completed audit for the year of 2011, as other matters have taken priority over turning information to Rossi and Rossi, our independent auditor, by the business administrator's office throughout the year. We have received an update from Rossi and Rossi regarding the audit. According to Rossi and Rossi in their January 26th letter, they had stated that in order to issue audited financial statements by May 31st of this year, the outline of the 2011 audit timetable must have been adhered to. Because Rossi and Rossi has not received the information on a timely basis, the completion of the audited financial statements has been delayed. As of October 24th, the actuarial calculations on the GASB 45 post-employment benefits had not been provided, which was holding up the audit. <clears throat> In addition, the Special Cities Fund demolition memo was still open. Rossi and Rossi had the understanding that this information was to be completed by the end of October. After this information is received by Rossi and Rossi and audit testing is completed, Rossi and Rossi will present a draft of the full financial statements for the city to review and complete the management discussion and analysis section of the audit report. Mrs. Craig, given the following information, please contact Mr. McGowan and inquire whether information that was scheduled to be submitted by Rossi and Rossi at the end of October was actually submitted to them. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. I too wish to begin by acknowledging the Scranton Departments of Police, Fire, and Public Works, as well as all emergency medical and management personnel who worked tirelessly throughout the days before, during, and after Hurricane Sandy to serve and protect the good people of Scranton. It is during such devastating and challenging times that the purpose of government is best exercised and appreciated. Without the men and women of the police, fire, and DPW departments, citizens could face emergencies alone and unprotected. These, among others, are the services city government provides and that you have come to expect. Please join me in thanking the hardworking men and women of our community for a job well done. On 
On tonight's agenda, in addition to several pieces of legislation which set many of the 2013 tax rates, is legislation submitted to City Council by the City's legal department to prohibit truck traffic with certain exemptions off Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 northeasterly to Elmhurst Boulevard, directing postage of signage and prescribing penalties for violations. This legislation was drafted and appears before Scranton City Council in order to respond to the demonstrated concerns of homeowners in the aforementioned area related to increased truck traffic which damages roads and negatively impacts the safety and quality of life of residents. Because homeowners have been so patient as they awaited relief from city government, I ask that council would suspend its rules next week to place the legislation into a final reading for adoption and immediate enforcement purposes. In addition, city council continues to work with the administration to amend the rental registration program as soon as possible to provide a partial credit in 2013 for owners of rental properties who recently and voluntarily paid 2012 fees in full without having been billed. Also, the city solicitor is in the process of drafting amusement tax legislation in conjunction with the Pennsylvania Economy League and council solicitor. This legislation will be introduced on council's agenda in the near future. At the same time, Council continues its review of the city's noise ordinance to prohibit boom cars from disturbing the quality of life of city residents. Next, I was informed that the Berkheimer office in the Steamtown Mall has been closed all week. A note on the office door indicates that they are closed due to Hurricane Sandy. Also, the Berkheimer website is down. These circumstances may create a potential problem since October 31st was the deadline for payment of third quarter earned income taxes. Mrs. Craig, please contact Ryan McGowan in the morning and follow up with memos to the mayor and him. City Council urges Berkheimer to inform taxpayers of their third quarter status and how to proceed with payments as soon as possible. The city of Scranton can ill afford to fall behind in EIT revenues at this time, and taxpayers should not be penalized for circumstances which are beyond their control. Finally, city clerk Mrs. Craik was in contact with the owner of Big House Tobacco Outlet following last week's council meeting. Because he is currently out of town, Mr. Fadden was unable to attend a public caucus this evening. However, he indicated that he and Attorney O'Brien, his counsel, are very anxious to attend a caucus on Thursday, November 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Therefore, counsel will consider tabling this legislation during tonight's meeting until such time as questions and concerns will be addressed publicly. And that's it. This, uh, this may just, uh, you brought up the rental registration. Um, the speaker last week brought up the a concern with the phrasing in the safety inspection where it said, but not limited to. Um, I received a couple of phone calls also concerned with that. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, I did not perceive the negative aspects of that when it was included. Um, I will speak with Attorney Kelly and um, see what we can do to revise that uh, because it, looking at it now it, it 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 does have the potential for harm um that was obviously unintended by us but uh we will look into it and then hopefully we can amend yes everything in one right amend it for 2013. yes thank you 5b Amending file of the council number six, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, imposing a tax for general revenue purposes on the transfer of real property situate within the city of Scranton. 
prescribing and regulating the method of evidencing the payment of such tax, conferring powers and imposing duties upon certain persons and providing penalties. By imposing the rate of the realty transfer tax at two and nine tenths percent for calendar year 2013. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, I understand the reasoning why the administration and many on council want to have this in front of the courts for the commuter tax legislation. But just by looking at the dates, if the mayor presents the budget on November 15th, which is required, and the first reading of the budget was on the 22nd, and then the second was on the 29th, that would be the first week of December the budget would be complete. Um, now I know these were contained in the recovery plan, but any alterations that wanted to be made, we wouldn't be able to, with the exception of, I believe it's, 5F, which, as Mr. Joyce said, by law cannot be changed. Um, I will be opposing these only for the fact that it sets in stone a portion of the budget before the budgetary process even plays out. So for that reason, I will be voting no on 5B, C, D, and E. And again, as Mr. Joyce mentioned, if 5F cannot be changed by law, then it could be approved for 10 years if we wanted to. So 5F, I will vote yes. And just to reiterate that all of these uh, taxes were included in the revised recovery plan and uh, the budget for 2013 is uh, largely being built upon that recovery plan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 5C amending file council number no. 7 1976 entitled an ordinance as amended imposing a mercantile license tax of two mills for the year 1976 and annually thereafter upon persons engaging in certain occupations and businesses therein providing for its levy and collection and for the issuance of mercantile licenses conferring and imposing powers and duties upon the tax collector of the city of Scranton and imposing penalties by imposing the mercantile license tax at one mill for calendar year 2013. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, amending file of council number 8, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended providing for the general revenue by imposing a tax at the rate of two mills upon the privilege of operating or conducting business in the city of Scranton as measured by the gross receipts therefrom, requiring registration and payment of the tax as conditioned to the conducting of such business, providing for the levy and collection of such tax, prescribing such requirements for returns and records, conferring powers and duties upon the tax collector, and imposing penalties by imposing the business privilege tax at the rate of one mill for calendar year 2013. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 5E, amending file of council number 17, 1994, entitled an ordinance as amended authorizing the governing body of the City of Scranton to enact a waste disposal and collection fee for the purpose of raising revenue to cover the waste disposal and collection costs incurred by the City of Scranton for the disposal of refuse by imposing a waste disposal and collection fee of $178 for calendar year 2013. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 5F, amending file of council number 145, 2007, entitled an ordinance renaming the emergency and municipal services tax to local service tax and by imposing a withholding of $52 for the calendar year 2013. 
At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5G, to prohibit truck traffic with certain exemptions off Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 northeasterly to Elmhurst Boulevard in the city of Scranton, directing postage of signage and prescribing penalties for violation thereof. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, I, just one question. Uh, as I was looking at, um, there are exemptions. Mm -hmm. uh, as I looked at the exemptions, would, would this prohibit, I guess there's a lot of development that is taking place in that section of East Mountain and actually up into Roaring Brook Township and all, and the, the primary access for any of that construction type traffic is across Lake Scranton Road. Now I, you know, as I've said before, I realized that it was excessive and all. I'm wondering if this legislation would prevent um, reasonable construction traffic from, from u utilizing that access? Well, I think um, probably your best bet would be to speak to attorney uh, Kelly regarding that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was ju it's just a concern, as I said. The, there aren't many ways to access that section of the mountain. And uh, while, I, while I do agree with the legislation, I, I would hate to see that further development be hindered or deterred because of it. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, file of council number 64, 2012, approving the transfer of a restaurant liquor license currently owned by Kalani's Incorporated Trading as Little Nikki's Pasta House, 77 Fallbrook Street, Carbondale, PA, 18407, license number R-14028, to pass Rush, LLC, for use at Big House Tobacco Outlet, located at 200 Greenridge Street, Scranton, PA, 18509, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. I would like to make a motion to table item 7A. Second. On the question? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think at last week's meeting we, we talked about this, and um, I, I, I'm prepared to vote no on this legislation for any number of reasons. And um, I guess tabling it and putting it off for another week, um, it may do some good, but I don't know. But I, I guess I'm opposed to tabling it as well. I would say that. For the most part, I concur with Mr. McGough. I, I will vote to table it only because it, it's another roadblock in the legislation being passed. Um, I strongly oppose this legislation um, based on what I heard from residents in the neighborhood. And as I said last week, it would take a, it would take a lot to change my opinion um, and go against the neighbors down there. But um, you know, tabling it is better than passing it, so I'll vote to table. And uh, I will vote to table because I do believe that uh, the owner should be given the opportunity to uh, make a presentation as has been the case uh, in other similar uh, situations and to respond to council's questions and concerns before it casts a final vote. Mrs. Evans, I just would add that the owner did have an opportunity to come last week for the caucus and he didn't show up. Last week's caucus? The public hearing. The public hearing. The public hearing. But he was not invited right. to a public caucus. No. That's, that's fine. Um, is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor of tabling item 7A, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 7B. 
for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption resolution number 46 2012 authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and apply for a grant application by the city of Scranton on behalf of Lace Building Affiliates LP to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development for a local share account grant pursuant to the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act for a real estate development project located at 1315 Mylord Avenue, Scranton, PA, to execute and enter into a local share account grant contract if approved with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to accept and utilize the grant in the amount of $555,000 if awarded by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for the project to be known as Scranton Lace Redevelopment Project. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I strongly recommend passage of Item 7B. Second. On the question? Yes, I just a few brief comments. Uh, first of all, this is, this is legislation not for us to grant the Waste Works money. It, it is merely a legislation to allow them and the city to apply for a grant and there is no guarantee that they received the grant. Uh, but I think the, the consent of council would, and the, I would, I'm hoping the unanimous consent of council would probably go a long way in their application process that we are strongly behind this project. And also to answer some concerns, we have all, I think we have all been to the Lace Works uh, yes. numerous times yes. and we have been at the last caucus that we had with the Lace Works affiliates <coughs> were provided with detailed plans for the project. Uh, I think we're all reasonably familiar with the project and what will occur and from what I can see it, it is something that's well worth, worth our support uh, the entire project and certainly uh, this grant application is uh, a step toward the completion of that project. And one item that wasn't mentioned that um, is something the police have been dealing with for a long period of time now is people breaking into the lace works and trying to steal copper wire, copper piping, um, people li possibly living in there, you know, squatters. So when the project moves forward, it'll eliminate that element of blight from the Lower Green Ridge neighborhood, which is something that you can't put a price on. And we're hopeful, as Mr. McGough and, and others have said, that, that they do receive the grant and the project um, is completed. Is there anyone else? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. If there is uh, no further business. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This yeah. meeting is Everyone adjourned. Everyone go vote.